did the Hindus ever have any practice or doctrine of idol destruction? Well, there are cases where Hindus take over Buddhist places, like the um, the Mahabodhi temple that we just discussed, when the temple had fallen empty and there were no Buddhists to do Buddhist services in there. Well, then the, 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 the place was adapted and then continued as a sacred place, but not a Buddhist place anymore. The reverse also happened, like uh, the, uh, what's it called in Cambodia, the Ang Angkor Wat, which was a Vaishnava temple, and was turned into a Buddhist temple. So uh, this sometimes happened, uh, though of course much less than what is claimed nowadays. You know, there are people who say, oh yeah, you know, the, the, the Brahmins turned stupas into temples. You see, <laughs> that can only be said by people who've never been to a temple or never seen a stupa. A stupa is a totally different thing from a temple. It's not some building that you walk into. You know, it's a stupa is in fact an artificial hill. Uh, you see, hills were often used in the dim and distant past as, you know, grave hills and so. A, a corpse, or at least the remains of a corpse, you know, a relic, like the tooth of the Buddha or so, is kept inside or there. That's a totally different thing from a temple. Um, but yeah, here and there this may have happened. Um, like nowadays, I hear that they're saying this about the um, Jagannath uh, temple in Puri. They should get their story straight, because I remember in the time of the... Uh, Ayodhya controversy. Of course, the secularists were at the exact same game as today. So they were saying, yeah, but Hindus have also done this. And look, you see, in Puri, they have taken an animist shrine from the tribals. Now, I don't think that the tribals build shrines. I think they worship in the open air, just like the Vedic Rishis. But anyway, for what it is worth, yes, there is a tribal presence at the site. And tribals, the local tribals have a ritual role in the functioning of the Jagannath temple. But so that's, that's a different lineage from the Buddhist one. And so you see this story is a bit uh, garbled. But on the whole, you see, in principle, I accept that this has happened here and there. That you see a place that was no longer functionally Buddhist was continued as a sacred place but with a different focus than the Buddha. Um, what was your question again? Dr. Els, uh, the question was that did the Hindus ever have a practice oh, or yeah. not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that uh, has to do with uh, another story that you hear a lot these days. Um, it was started by uh, an American Marxist historian, Richard Eaton. And I don't throw the label Marxist around. That's only for people who themselves appropriate that label. He has called himself a Marxist. Okay. So, um, he, um, first of all, minimizes what Muslims did to Hindus. Uh, though less than, 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 than what people think. Like only yesterday I saw another YouTube video where some, uh, Muslim, uh, student in Cambridge was being interviewed by a, an Anglican theologian. And, um, so he could give the whole story about how the Hindus are persecuting the Muslims, how the Hindus are doing false history and all that. Um, and so he, of course, brought in the position of Richard Eaton. And so he said, yeah, and Richard Eaton has done a count. And there's, in fact, only 80 temples that the Muslims destroyed. That is not true at all, even according to Eaton's count. Of course, Eaton is a very much a, a negationist. He totally minimizes the magnitude of what uh, Islamic uh, rulers have done in India. But nevertheless, not that bad as is being said here, because if you count these 80 cases of temple destruction, they don't mean 80 temples destroyed. 
like one of the cases he enumerates, is the destruction of a thousand temples in Paranasi. So that's not one of the 80, that's a thousand. So the 80 are rather more than 80, are thousands themselves. So even according to Eton, the uh, Hindu temples, you see at least thousands among them were destroyed. Okay. Now, the point we're coming to uh, is that uh, this same Eton has also said, oh, but it is an old Hindu habit. And so the Islamic invaders brought nothing new. They continued what was there. Well, first of all, of course, that um, royally overestimates the degree to which Islamic invaders took inspiration from Hindu example. In fact, mostly when they invaded here coming from Uzbekistan or so, they didn't know anything about the Hindu customs. And anyway, they didn't need those to guide them. You see, if they wanted to destroy temples, they had the example of the Prophet Muhammad. If Muhammad took over the Kaaba from the Arab pagans. The Arab pagans worshipped there. There were 360 idols in there. So that if people came on pilgrimage, because of course the, the, uh, the Hajj, the Islamic pilgrimage, was also taken over from the pagans of Arabia. So when people from all over Arabia came there, you know, they could always find a statue of the god that they particularly cherished. So they were all destroyed by Muhammad. This is, this is described in Islamic sources. This is one of the great moments in Islam. Uh, 